My name is Tommy White. Um, uh, in 2013, we had a, a lot of things happen in my family. Uh, one of which I'm really grateful for is, is uh, regaining my health. Uh, early in February, late in February, uh, I was hospitalized with Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is kind of a rare, uh, rare virus. Uh, leads to, to paralysis and a few other things. And fortunately, we were able to catch it uh, quick enough. And uh, after a trying week in the hospital, uh, I was able to recover and uh, get back to my family, uh, my beautiful daughter and wife. Uh, so I'm certainly grateful for my health, and I'm grateful for all that God's done for us, uh, just as a family and, and uh, personally, to get back to where I used to be and uh, as I slowly uh, regain that health. So I'm certainly grateful for, for the healing powers that, uh, that God has granted my, me and my family. Uh, my name is Daniel Gorey. This is my about fifth year in Wildwood, I think, and I just completed my first semester at the University of Oklahoma, and that was really great going through that, knowing that God was a part of my life. And I think one of the clearest examples of that to me was my roommate my freshman year. Fantastic guy, a real answer to prayer, that he's a really solid guy and a solid Christian, uh, that we were really able to encourage each other throughout the semester to walk in Christ. And so that was really nice. Yeah, my name is Tony Middleton. This is my wife, Jackie. And we've been going to Wildwood for about 10 years. And um, probably the biggest thing in uh, 2013 that we were a part of was uh, the trip to Latvia. We were very... Um, happy to uh, be able to go and, and work with the children there and uh, just really um, build relationships and, and we've been able to keep in contact with some of the kids there throughout the year and uh, through email back and forth uh, so that's really been fun to, to kind of see those relationships grow. I really just put a face to a ministry. I love that Wildwood has really gotten um, very mission focused. There's always been mission trips along the way, but um, I feel like as a church we've kind of gotten a little bit more into that and um, we've always been praying for missions and praying for those who have gone, but now to have a face to go with that and a relationship to build on and it's really exciting. And um, I would just say for me, I think trust um, in our lives we have seen God's hand so many times, um, just couldn't be anything but God um, bringing us through things and um, this year was just another blessing of that, um, just God showing us, take a step, obey and I will bless you and you can trust me to take you through anything big, small, otherwise, so it's been a very exciting year. My name is Brayden and um, I was thankful for my sister last year because we got to play games and um, play with cars and she was really happy and stuff. I am Elise Brooks and I am thankful for my friends and family. I'm Kinsey and I've been at Wildwood here since I believe first grade. My big brother got engaged a couple months ago so that's what I'm thankful for. I'm Cade, and I'm really thankful that God has blessed me with an awesome family. Um, uh, I've been at Wildwood for about five months. I haven't been here very long, but um, I'm very thankful that uh, in May our um, house did not get hit, and I was very thankful for that because a lot of our friends' houses got hit, and so I'm just over thankful that we didn't get hit. My name is Emma Crenshaw. Um, I thank God for my new baby nephew, Caleb. Um, I was really happy because I got to be able to hold him a lot, and <laughs> I always got to see my sister-in-law again and my brother, and I don't ever get to see my brother because he's in the Air Force. And I'm just really thankful for um, him giving me the um, ability to be an aunt. We're Mark and Kathy Baltender, and we've received several blessings this year. We've been here at Wildwood for 11 years, or something. And the first thing that happened for us this year was we got our first grandbaby in February, so we were pretty excited about that. Uh, on July 5th, I was uh, diagnosed with an aggressive <clears throat> form of breast cancer, and uh, Mark and I had decided that we would always uh, go with alternative uh, therapy rather than traditional and so 
just prayed for God to guide me and uh, direct us and just show us what to do. And every day, he just uh, he did just that. And uh, we had a, a, a wonderful amount of people praying for us. And we thank each and every one of you that did that. And we're happy to say that after four months of um, alternative therapy on uh, November 5th, my PET scan came back. Was, uh, the doctor said it was excellent. God introduced us to the nutritional approach to taking taking on disease. We were able to learn for nine years what was what we could do uh, rather than follow chemotherapy, radiation, and try to treatment. We were really blessed with someone who came through and uh, wanted to be anonymous and pay for my PET scan. That was a very big blessing. And I would just really want to say thank you to the elders and the uh, pastors in our church and all their wives who prayed over us in the very beginning. And then also my Bible study group on Wednesday nights took the time out to pray for me specifically one night. And just want to thank you all for your support. And did I mention we got a new grandbaby? <laughs> and she was great therapy. <laughs> she was. Hello, my name is Mark Robinson. I've uh, attended Wildwood, so I guess I'm the original Mark Robinson. I've been here for uh, at least 20 years or more. Um, this past year has been wild and crazy. I, there are a lot of blessings. I've had, uh, I'll have two new grandchildren by the end of the year. I've had a daughter get married. But the thing that really stands out is the tornado that was here in uh, Oklahoma. Um, my daughter uh, was rooming with a, gr a friend that goes to church here as well as my uh, both daughters were in the same uh, house and the tornado remodeled uh, that house took off the top floor so along with you know my family and so many others there was a lot of loss and sorrow but what I really saw was um, what love really is I saw so much outreach from this church, uh, my school family, uh, the, the people that I teach with. Uh, there were so many blessings. I was, uh, we were able to take in a family. I had a, 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 some extra room at my house and we were able to take them in and help them recover. But there was, there was so much love. Um, it was amazing to see people from out of state come in and, when I think about it, I think it was really a great time. And all that loss and, and all that sorrow and all that trouble, it was really a great time. Because that's what I think God really wants us to be as Christians, is, is just all that love that was shown there. My name is Rebecca Roberts. I've been coming to Wildwood since I was a sophomore in high school, so close to 10 years now. Um, and I am thankful because um, in the past year, um, I, well, I started out the year in Moore, um, and I was not attending Wildwood anymore. I was actually going to church in um, Oklahoma City, and I was on a path. I thought I was heading north. I would plan to move to Edmond and start working in ministry there, and I had a path. I thought I knew where I was going. Um, and then I was dealing with a very heavy depression, very, very heavy depression. And um, so uh, living in more away from a lot of my family and friends here at Wildwood um, was just really trying to find what direction God wanted me to go in. And I thought that meant heading more north um, and going to that church in Oklahoma City. Um, and then um, May 20th, um, I lost my house in the tornado and um, was completely like every single thing about my life the way that was before like shifted and changed. In the middle of that, God, um, the, the resounding, like the, the ongoing theme of all of that was that God is still good. Like, I looked at all of the destruction of my neighborhood and my neighbors and um, the 7-Eleven that used to be on the corner that's now gone where people had actually died and there was this, this something in my heart that just kept saying God is still good. Like, I didn't know why, but I knew He was still good. That was the breaking of my depression. Like, God used the tornado and a, a car wreck that was actually two like, weeks before the tornado, He used both of those things to show me that He was good and that I was loved. And He brought me back here to Wildwood and I was surrounded by this amazing community that I, I had always had, but I didn't realize and I didn't see it for what it was because I guess you need to be kind of taken away from it and like brought back to it before you can really see and 
you guys gave me a new computer. I don't think you knew that, but I needed a computer. You gave me one. Like, you guys are amazing, and I just have such a community here, and that God, God uses community to show us that we are loved. We really are the hands and feet of Jesus, and when we really are doing that the way we're supposed to, then people can see that God really is good and that we're really loved by Him, and it really does break down depression, it really does break down binds that are binding people, and that's what happened to me. Like, no matter what the storm, no matter what the circumstances, God is still good, and that is definitely what I have learned this year. So. Um, my name is Sierra Morin. I've been going to Wildwood since I was born, and I'm thankful for my grandma that she's still here. Uh, we had a scare. She had a heart attack, well, kind of, uh, a couple months ago, and it was really scary, but I'm thankful that we're all able to spend the holidays together. I'm thankful for the uh, amazing opportunity to, uh, to be a part of this body of believers and to attend a place where truth is communicated and uh, where a leadership is faithful to, to scripture and it's not watered down and that uh, there is a, a true love response towards a community that is in desperate need for, for Christ and just to be finally a member of this body is uh, an amazing relief and true honor. So uh, I'm really thankful for Wildwood. I'm thankful for what they're doing and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, my name is Kimberly Robinson. And one thing that I've seen the Lord do this year is to just gently remind me that He's taking care of my heart and that He is willing and able to heal it. Mark and I have recently been through a string of events that seem like maybe too many um, medical issues and personal struggles stacked on top of each other. And we've definitely seen the Lord's provision and His faithfulness and felt His love and His peace at every turn. But I either didn't have enough time or just didn't take the effort to fully process everything before the next storm rolled in. Many people know that in July 2012, I received the amazing gift of renewed health when my sister gave me her kidney. And that transplant also marked for us the beginning of a period of calmer waters, calmer than we'd seen in a long time. And, and that's been almost a year and a half now. But during that time, I realized that a lot of my um, emotions, my personal frustrations or um, anxieties, insecurities, disappointments um, that I'd picked up over the years were just too big for me to take care of myself. So at the beginning of this year, I started asking the Lord to just make 2013 a year of emotional healing for me. Looking back over the year, I can think of a number of times that God has shown me that He is working for me. And my favorite time was several months ago when He gave me a sweet picture of hope and encouragement one Sunday morning during the worship service. I felt like I had been in an extended period of winter, and it wasn't just a constant dreary and gray winter. There were still lots of happy winter things, like just like winter has um, clear sunny days and hot chocolate in front of the fire and playing in the snow, but it was still winter. Um, but that Sunday morning, I felt like my heart was seeing that spring was around the corner. And I had a specific image of bright little crocuses um, just barely starting to poke their heads out of the ground and quietly announce that spring was around the corner. And that picture was precious to me and was a confirmation that the Lord was going to bring healing. And what was really special was later that afternoon, the Lord led me to um, Isaiah 35, 1 through 2, which says this. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. And so several months later, the Lord has continued to take care of my heart and point me further to spring. And he's been faithful once again to show me his love personally and specifically. So I just want to say thank you, Lord. 
I'm Karen Uckert, and this is my son, Kester, and he is now in eighth grade. And this, uh, up until May, I was a music teacher at Briarwood Elementary. We knew that the storms were coming, and Kester was supposed to have a day off of school that day, um, but he ended up with me at Briarwood instead of going home. And I was able to go get several classes of first grade and um, they were out in the gym. The PE teacher did not know that the tornado was coming. So we were able to get those first graders out of the gym and into their classroom where um, they were able to get under some desks and n nobody in our building uh, perished. Student-wise, we didn't really have any major injuries. And so that was amazing. And um, as the tornado came toward us, um, Kester and I and two other teachers were in a hallway with uh, the preschool children and we went into a faculty bathroom and um, I remember feeling that this was the most scared I had ever been in my life. Um, I was very focused on the two of us and what was going to happen. And, um, you know, until the last minute, you always think it's going to move. You know, that's not really going to happen. This really isn't going to come hit us. And when it did, that's when we were under a sink, taking shelter, hoping that if something fell, that we would be protected. I actually don't remember a lot about what happened in the tornado. The last thing I remember was sort of a uh, kid screaming and the bathroom door blowing open. And from then on, I blacked out in some pickup truck and I look behind me and there's smoke coming from the school and uh, my mom's in the seat next to me, the truck's covered in mud and you know the place looks like it's been hit by a bomb and we look up and you know it looks like another tornado's forming over us and I thought well this day just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> I just remember bits and pieces of it now walking in between the cars and you know, there are people following my mom saying, Mrs. Zucker, Mrs. Zucker, what do we do? What do we do? Where do we go? My mom was just, says, I don't know, I don't know. Because no one, because really, whenever you're in that kind of position, you don't really know what you're going to do. And you just have to trust that God will come up with the best ideas for you. I think the thing that really sticks with me is this, that look of actual, sh you know, just astonishment and shock of that nobody could believe that this had happened. And uh, people just trying to do the best they could to help each other. And of course, by the time we got to the Y, um, my husband had heard that the school had been hit and that he was at the school. So we had actually traded places and it took him a couple hours to find us and figure out that we were okay. That whole year, we had, had been meeting with several teachers, praying almost every morning for our school, praying God's hand of protection on our students, praying for God's leadership in us as teachers. And as we walked away from there, one of my teachers that I had been praying with that year said we had no idea what we were praying for all year. That the last day of school, our prayers will have culminated in the saving of our children and of our staff and faculty. My name is Brian Sagabill, and we've been coming to Wildwood since about 1994, about 19 years. My story is a little bit uh, different. Um, I've been with a company in Oklahoma City for 17 years, over 17 years, and September of this year um, I was let go. That whole process was painful. Um, a lot of self-reflection of who am I, who am I known for, what do, where do I find my identity. My identity is not in my job. I'm a child of God. One of the things that after, I think after the initial shock, the next morning I, um, there was a lot of weight, there was a lot of stress that was going on. Um, that morning that, that I got let go, I had a hot water, I had a water heater leak, had lunch with John, just had a lot of, a lot of stuff that was going on, a lot of burdens that were on my mind. And the next morning I just cried out to God. I just. Got up early in the morning, like three o'clock in the morning, and wrote out to God what, what was all going on. All of the struggles, all the frustration, 
and just cried out to him. That was one of my prayers, is God, I want to be close to you. I don't want to do it superficially. I want to be the person that you want me to be. Lead me in the direction. Let me be the leader of my family, the husband, the father, the dad, the employee that I need to be. So through daily devotionals, we found this devotional that we've had for that we go through, it's a daily one. You daily walk or something like that. And one morning it was completely foggy outside. Couldn't see the backyard fence. I mean, real thick. And the devotional was about the fog of God. That he puts the fog to hide all the distractions around you. That morning was foggy. And that was a very, as the fog burns away, as the fog cleared, it just became crystal clear of what he wanted me to do. And not be distracted by all the stuff around me. Prepare the fields of what I needed to do. Continue to go do the presentations that I need to go present. Create the, create the resume and he will do amazing things. And I can also distinctly remember a conversation with Beck that when we were talking about um, having our trust in God. Is it trust in God and job? Trust in God and this? Trust in God and that? And it was a very aha moment for us that we said our trust is in God. Wherever He wants us to go, whatever He wants us to do, we will do. Through this process, everywhere that I try to put my hand, put my resume, no, not interested. Thank you very much, we'll keep it on file, no. But it was encouraging, it wasn't discouraging, it's was like, this is not where God wants us to be, this is not where He wants us to be. And on one of the trips to Denver to do a presentation, I had called a company that I had known for many years. And I had wanted to see their software, I hadn't seen it in three or four years, and we were supposed to see it before I got let go. And I called them and said, hey, I'm gonna be in Denver, I wanna see your software. And they call me back, sorry man, we're in Houston, can't see it. So we'll call you next week. So I did my presentation in Denver at the seller company, gave my resume out to a lot of different folks, came back the next week and this company called me and they said, are you looking for a job? I said, as a matter of fact, I am. And they said, what are you looking for? And I told them what my skills are, what my desire had been. And this whole time I had kind of been able to focus more on refining what I want to do. And the owner of the company called me the next day and said, um, this is what I need. I need somebody to help me do this. And it was a perfect match for what my skills are. So I flew to Denver again, interviewed with them. I'm very excited about the opportunity. So we've made a deal where I'll be working with these guys out of my house. I don't have to move to Denver. I get to work here. I start my new job in January. I'm excited. <laughs>